Attention, target customers. Attention, target. In the beginning, God created Earth. In the beginning, God created the universe. God created man in his own image. God created a woman. God created a woman and a man. A woman and a man. He did not create any trespassical being. He did not create any kind of homosexual. He did not create any kind of confused person. God created woman and man. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Target support homosexuals to go into the public restrooms of a female. Target supports transsexuals going into women's restrooms and dressing rooms. Nowhere a man can simply walk into a woman's restroom thinking he's a woman. There's been cases already where there are molestations of children and women inside Target restrooms. Just because Target wants to be supported by the community, we don't worry about how God looks at them. We don't worry about how we will be judged because God will judge you guys. Anybody who shots at Target is supporting that too. Target is also selling abortion pills as well. Target has blood of innocent children on their hands. Target is allowing the innocent children to be murdered. Your children walk into the store when they sell the same pills with the Cuban. What kind of a person would shop at Target when he's the when he's a part? homosexuals and want to support abortion. You spend your money at a wicked place. God will judge you guys for doing this. Anybody that commits sin, usually is going to be judged like God. Anybody that commits sin is a child of the devil. There's a lot of Christians out here that say they're Christian, but they must be lukewarm. Because there are no other Christians out here judging and telling Target what's going on. Where are the real no Christians at? Where are the real fear of God fearing people at? Anybody who says to not God, anybody who doesn't even fear God anymore, you should know that God will give you a second death. You guys just see you guys are people out of nowhere? No brains. No brains. God crazy you guys. He gave us a pure Bible to read and to know what our will is for. There's nobody with the Bibles. Do you guys know what a Bible means? Basic instructions before leaving Earth. Basic instructions. You guys go out and buy a, a 40,000 piece Lego set without reading the instructions? I mean, hey, you could probably try, but you can't do it. Life is a long time, and eternity is even longer. So you guys out here are 30, 20, 55 years old, 80, they ain't nothing compared to eternity. That ain't even a prequel in somebody's eyes compared to eternity. It took us a long time to be judged, to be rubbing your dice for your life. You better be sure where you're going to go, because we all go somewhere after death. Be sure to get ready with God before you die. He says you must repent from your sins or else you will likewise perish in the book of Luke. Every man should be baptized or he shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're not baptized, 
By the Holy Spirit, you will not see the kingdom of God. You must be a newborn creature to see the kingdom of God. There's a lot of people out here that have a lot of knowledge, but they don't show it to nobody. He tells us to not hide our light, but to show it so others can see it. So others can see it through peace and to also follow God as well. There's a lot of evil in this world, but nobody exposes it. Everybody just hides it underneath their bed and think it's not their problem. We live in this world, it is our problem. We live in this state, it is our problem. We live in this country, it is our problem. We need a God fearing president. That's what we need in the house. Maybe Trump would do a lot better than what Obama's doing right now. A lot of you guys say you're Christians, but you're not. You're walking in that store, you ain't nothing but a lukewarm Christian going to hell. You guys read the Bible sometimes? You guys don't read nothing. You guys may read it, but you don't act on it. You guys read it, but you don't live it. Are we just supposed to read it for ourselves or actually help people? If you see a child out here going to run over by a car, don't you stop it? Or don't you just let it happen? Because a lot of people just let it happen. It doesn't necessarily have to pretend to a child be ran over if you can actually save his life or eternal hell or eternal salvation. Do something about it. Wake up. The devil is blinding everybody's eyes. There's demons possessed in people that are manifesting themselves. People think they're homos, people think they're faggots, people think they're lesbians, people think they're gays. That's all nothing but the devil confusing you and taking you to the world of destruction. That's what he's doing. And you know what? He's winning a lot of people's lives because a lot of people don't wake up. A lot of people don't take off that callous out of their eyes. People don't open up their ears to listen. I once was a bad person too. I once was a huge sinner. I was a huge sinner. But you know what? I gave my life over to Jesus. And he, 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 he cursed me. He fixed me. He made me new. There's nothing that Jesus and the blood of Christ cannot do. All you need to do is give your life to him. Give your life to him and he'll fix it. Who's Christian out here? Anybody Christian? If you're Christian, you must be a, a, a sleeping Christian. You must be a, a lukewarm Christian. The book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 19 says, Revelation 3 16 says, All lukewarm Christians will be spewed. God is going to throw them out of his mouth. Throw away everybody who is not pertaining to his kingdom. Lukewarm. What does lukewarm mean? Lukewarm is somebody who doesn't bring something to the table. If you're not bringing, to no, if you're not bringing nothing to the table, he's going to speak you up because you're a good for nothing. God, God gave some, uh, there's a parable in the, in the book of, in the good book of the book says that there's a master who gave his, his uh, servants some uh, talents. They were like uh, coins. One he gave three, the other servant he gave two, and the other, the last servant he gave one. All but the last servant went out and they multiplied their talent. Now when the master came back, they showed their master what they had done to multiply their talent. Now the one who had won decided to hide the talent so he could make sure he had to give it back to his master. That master came back and was angry at that servant who didn't multiply their talents. He was he was surely blessed with the other with the other servants that went out and they multiply their talents. You must fear God. You must fear God and obey Him. Jesus Christ is the author to eternal salvation for those who obey Him. That's Hebrews 5.9. You want to write that down in your book. A lot of people are stuck on John 3.16. Yeah, He did. God did send down God's Son for anybody who believes in Him who have eternal life. Whoever does not believe in him has already been condemned for not believing in the one and only Son. You gotta think about that. For believing in him, if you believe in him, you know you can do all things through him. If you can do all things through him, you can change your life. You can change your life for him. You can give your life to him. You can be sinless. You can, you can repent from your sins and turn to him to be sanctified. You don't have to be bonded to, to sins anymore. You can be set free. 
You can make the wise choice on not to sin on a daily basis. You can make the wise choice to put down that bottle. You can make the wise choice to put down that cigarette and not do that anymore. You can make the wise choice and say, I'm not going to be a homo no more. I'm going to live for God. You must fear God. Nobody fears God. Everybody thinks that they have their own free will. We do have a free will. And so when somebody's screaming in the lake of fire, don't say, oh, God, why'd you send me here? No, he gave you a free will to be to go to, to go to heaven or to go to the lake of fire. So that's going to be on you. You need to repent from your sins and turn to God. Repentance means turning away from your own ways and turning to something good, new. Turn to Jesus. There's blood, there's power in the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb was slain. He was spot free. He was blemish free. He was a perfect human. He was a perfect God. He was manif he manif God manifested himself as a human to be the ultimate sacrifice. In the Old Testament days, you had to you had to offer up a sacrifice to, to cleanse your sin. That sacrifice had to be perfect. You had to make sure that you went out and chose a perfect animal to sacrifice. Be happy about it. You had to make sure that God was going to be happy, happy with the sacrifice you were going to you were going to offer to Him. You have to be touched for this. Make sure you have the ultimate sacrifice to give God. That if you're not going to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, because He said Himself He was not happy with any other sacrifice. That's why He cast out. That's why He brought down His only Son to be the ultimate sacrifice, so that we can make be pure for Him. And we may have a chance to live forever and ever in the kingdom of God. The reason why I'm out here today is to expose the evil, wickedness of Target. Target, you let homos and, and men go into women's restrooms? There are girls, there are little children going to women's restrooms. And there's men going in there as well? Wake up, America. Wake up, people. You're taking your child into somewhere where they can be a man to see your child in the restroom. I am sick you. I am a father. And I will never let to take my child into that restroom. A couple years ago, a man could get arrested for falling into the restroom. And now, America, I could get arrested for warning you for this. What has the world come to? What has this state come to? What has this country come to? Nobody fears God. That's what it comes to. Nobody, nobody listens to the law of God anymore. Our forefathers that came to America, they were fear, they were God-fearing men. George Washington once said, there is no country without the foundation of God. George Washington, the first president, what happened? The foundation has left America. That's why it crumbles down. You wonder why there's a whole bunch of stuff going on? God will soon judge America as he judged, as he judged Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for not obeying God, for not fearing God, for listening to the own will, for following the own will. That's why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Firestone, brimstone. He turned the lady into salt. Not So, if you turn from your sins, don't look back at your old life. If you're looking back at your old life, it's because you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the, the simple ways you used to live. You don't love God enough to, you know, trust God enough that He could change you. He could change you. He could change your mind. He could do anything. There's power in His name. There's power in His way. There's power in his road. Just turn to him and he will do it for you. You gotta show, you gotta first show the faith that he can do all these things for you in order for him to do it for you. You, you just wanna sit back and, and, and let him be No, you gotta put your work into it too. You gotta put your work into it too. Abraham showed the perfect example of works. If you just have faith alone and only faith, that's not gonna save you. Abraham showed the perfect faith that he had for God. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. What did Abraham do? He took his son up to the mountain, 
and was right about ready to sacrifice him just to make God happy. That is works. That's the work you gotta show. You gotta show it who you how you live. You gotta show it by following his commandments. You gotta show it by following the things that he told you to do. He told you to go and preach to all nations. There's nobody else preaching out here. What? Nobody, nobody fears God. Nobody knows. Hey man, do you know that They let men go into women's restrooms, into the women's dressing rooms. You don't care. You don't care. How, how, how don't you care? I have a daughter. I would never let my wife take my daughter go in there. I would never let my wife, my wife take, my, take my daughter into that restroom. You don't know if the next door is a guy in there with a camera that's happened in Texas, that's happened in other states already. People don't fear God. People don't care. They just want to live their life and spend their money. That's all people care about is their money and their materialistic objects and their, and their wealth and their happiness here on earth. Yeah, you got to stay living here on earth, stay your mind to the to God. In James 4, in James 4, 4, it says, anybody that's a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you if you perform, if you perform yourself to this world, you're going to be an enemy to God. He's going to reject you on the day of judgment. He's going to say, no, you live for that world. You're not turned to me. You're not following my commandments. I don't know you, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. Iniquity is work of lawlessness. Lawlessness. You know, you give a perfect example for us to know how it's going to be. If we break a law here, we go to jail for it. If we break, a, if we break any kind of small little law, we get tried for it. We have to go to trials. We have to go to a courtroom. It's just the same way in Judgment Day. You have all these errors you're committing right now. And you're going to be tried for every single thing you've done. Your book will be open on the day of judgment. And you're going to have to answer for every single act that you've done already. But wait. Wait. There is a hope for anybody that wants to live, live free in Jesus. All you need to do is get on your knees for mercy and ask for, ask for forgiveness and repent from your sins and turn to Jesus. That's all you got to do. And actually live holy for He is holy. And live for Him, and not for this world. A lot of people don't care, though. They okay. want to keep living for the world. They want to keep living for their money. A lot of people, they have time to go and shop. A lot of people, they have time to go and drink. A lot of people, they have time to go and fornicate. A lot of people have time for all the other things, but they don't have time for God. They don't have time for God. They think they're good. They think, oh, I'm helping children now. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. They think, I'm good. I'm good. I'm a good person. Being a good person won't send you nowhere. If you don't have God, you won't, you won't go nowhere. You got to have zeal for God. You got to show that you're on fire for God. How, how dedicated are you for God? You just go to church on Sundays and say, I have power. I have zeal. You don't have zeal. You don't have, you don't, you don't believe. You just want to go to church to make sure everybody else can see that you go to church. That don't mean nothing. That just means you get up and you get dressed real nice and go to church. That's all I mean. It don't mean nothing. God will judge you, Target, for selling abortion pills. God will judge you, Target, for letting homosexuals disappoint the homosexual move. God will judge you for all this. But yet you don't care. You don't care. You just want to keep working. You just want to become a manager. You just want to get that promotion. That's all you want. That's all you want. To get that next level promotion. So you get more money, more benefits, and that 401k plan. That's all you want. 